Parsam window. In order to calculate the number of samples within a hypercube that is located at the center of a d-dimensional coordinate system, we can use the following function, where the function phi uh, takes a vector u and checks if every component of the vector is less than 1 over 2. So, in a two-dimensional di case, if the given vector is here, we can see that the first component of the vector is less than 1 over 2, and the second component of the vector is also less than 1 over 2. So, it is in this two-dimensional hypercube, that's a uh, square. Uh, when uh, we see the other point, we can see that the first component of the uh, other point does not uh, is not in the uh, region is not less than 1 over 2 uh, but uh, second component is less than 1 over 2 here so uh, since its first uh, component is not less than 1 over 2 it lies uh, outside of this uh, rect um, square so uh, as long as b all of the components uh, is less, uh, are less than 1 over 2, we can say that it is in this unit uh, hypercube, or in the two-dimensional case, it's a square. So, uh, when we, uh, we can then decide uh, if a sample xi is in the hypercube that is centered at uh, x. Uh, where we calculate uh, the probable density. Uh, we can do that by using the, this expression of the function, where we subtract uh, from x uh, uh, the, the sample xi, so that uh, so that uh, it is centered around x and when we divide it by the dimension we select for the hypercube or the edge uh, length we select for the hypercube uh, we make it uh, a unit hypercube so with this expression we can conclude if uh, the sample xi is in the hypercube centered around x then, the number of samples within the hypercube located at x is given by this expression. We sum up all the samples that are in the hypercube. So, when we substitute equation 5, uh, this to equation 5, remember the equation 5, which was this. We have a summation, uh, 1 over n, summation. 1 over Vn and the decision whether the sample is in the hypercube or not. For example, suppose that we have seven samples where the samples are 2, 3, 4, 8, 10, 11 and 12. Let the window width to be 3 and we would like to estimate density at x equals 1. So, when we use the equation 7, where Vn equals h, because this is one-dimensional, uh, we calculate the probable density of uh, at x equals 1. So, it is 1 over 7, since we have 7 samples here, times the summation from i equals 1 to 7, sum over all samples, uh, 1 over 3, that is, uh, since Vn is equal to h, we can see that Vn is 3 here. And this expression decides if the point is in the hypercube uh, located around 1, right? So, 
we do this for all the points in the summation. So phi 1 minus 2 over 3, phi 1 minus 3 over 3, 2, phi 1 minus 12 over 3. Since phi 1 minus 2 over 3 is equal to minus 1 over 3, that's less than uh, 1 over 2, that's less than absolute value of it's so absolute value is less than 1 over 2. However, uh, after the second component, which is equal minus 2 over 3, it is uh, absolute value is higher than 1 over 2. So uh, up from this point and on, all of the terms are 0. So then we can calculate the probability density at 1 is 1 over 21. We can do this uh, at every point, and then uh, so that we have we can have a probability density at every point we like. However, the hypercube is not the only window function that we can use. As long as the window function phi u is a dust function, which means it is non-negative and it integrates to one. The Parzan window approximation can converge. So, we can, uh, when we are given such a function, such a probability density, suppose that we don't know this probability density function, and we are trying to approximate this function, <coughs> uh, we can do that, uh, that with uh, Parzan window with a Gaussian window function phi u where uh, phi u is defined as 1 over uh, square root of 2 pi e to do uh, minus u square over 2 so when we choose hn equals h1 over square root of n the parser window estimates for a different number of samples and different window sizes can be seen below. Note that with, with a single sample we can only observe the form of the window function phi. As the number of samples increase, the estimation converges to the underlying distribution. So this is with one sample, this is with 16 samples, 256 samples, and as n goes to infinity we can Every time we can see the underlying test function. Uh, one problem with the Parzan window estimation is that the result is particularly dependent on the window size and window function when number of samples is finite. In the next video we will discuss k-nearest neighbor methods.